keynote session number two, innovation and space technology. We are fortunately Padmasi, Mr. M. Natarajan, former scientific advisor to Raksha Mantri, will be chairing this session. <clears throat> I take this opportunity to kindly introduce him to you, though you might be knowing him very well. <laughs> Sir Natarajan joined DRD in 1970 at CVRD and has worked in several important projects there. He was main instrumental in the MBT Arjun program since the inception and was appointed the program director of MBT in 1987 and he later took over as director of CVRD Awardee in December 1989. Subsequently, he moved over as chief controller, armament, no, chief controller, armament and combat engineering at DRD headquarters from January 2001 to August 2004. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I was thinking I'll invite him after. Okay, please, sir. Please. May I request the other speakers of this session? Mr. P. N. Vlasov, head Gromov Research Institute, Russia, to please come to the stage and occupy the seat. Mr. Hakan Bushke, CEO, Saab. And Mr. C. S. Harish from ISRO. To continue with the introduction of Mr. Natarajan, Mr. Natarajan was awarded Padam Sri in 2003 for his distinguished service to the organization. He is also a recipient of the Best Scientist Award in 1994, Best System Laboratory, that the CVRD got in, during his time in 1995, National Design Award by the Institute of Engineers in 1996, and Technology Leadership Award in 2003. Mr. Natarajan is a graduate from IIT Madras and MTech from in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Mumbai. He did his Master in Science, Master of Science in Military Vehicle Technology from RMS UK in 1975. He is a distinguished alumni of IIT Chennai, fellow of the National Academy of Engineers, and member Society of Automobile Engineers and Fruit Power Society of India. Mr. Natarajan is currently holding the post of Chairman, Board of Governors of the Indian Institute of Technology, Mandi, Himachal Pradesh, and has been entrusted the responsibility of building this IIT. It's my pleasure to introduce and request Mr. Natarajan to kindly conduct this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. This session, we are going to have three speakers to focus on innovation and space technology. The, the first of the speaker is from Gromov Flight Research Center in Russia, who's going to talk about the development of scientific, methodical, and flight experimental basis for aircraft engineering, flight research, and tests. I think we have had fairly good description of the technologies, their importance, aggregating the technologies in an appropriate manner for inter integrating to produce products uh, highlighted by the previous speakers. And it will be in fitness of things to know how a flight test engineer looks at a finished product or a, or a product which is converging in meeting with the functional needs of the proposed platform or design. Uh, Mr. Grimau, born in 1960, educated uh, 
from Kharkov Air Force Academy in 1989, from the test pilot school, worked in RSK MIG as a test pilot, and in 2002, after a long experience, was appointed as Deputy Director General of the RSK MIG Flying Institute as Chief of Test Flight Te Center, named after A.V. Fedetal, Chief of Flight Service, as a senior test pilot. Since 1st January 2010, he is the head of FSU, that is the Flight Research Institute, named after M.M. Grimaud, coordinating it with Deputy Director General of Open Society, RSK MIG, in flight tests. P.N. Blasol participated in tests of carrier-based fighters, MiG 29K, uh, for use in Admiral Kuznetsov cruiser, and tests of MiG 31, MiG 31M, MiG 31D, MiG 29, MiG 29 SMT, 29K, MiG 80, and MiG 35 fighters. He performed maiden flights of aircraft MiG-29M2 in 2001, MiG-29 OVT in 2003, and a new carrier-based fighter MiG-29K in 2007. P.N. Blasov has been awarded the titles of Hero of Russia and Merited Test Pilot of the Russian Federation. We'll, we'll all be, we all look forward to hearing from him on the developmental aspects of flight test research and the testing methodology that he has gained over these years. Maybe look forward to Mr. Blasov's uh, lecture, please. May I request you, sir? Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, my dear aviation colleagues, scientists, specialists. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for your introduction. I'd like to say a few words about our view on the problem of technology, technology exchange in a very interesting particular part which connect to a flight test. Our Flight Research Institute <coughs> was formed in 1941 by a decision of uh, Soviet leader Yosef Stalin. It was a great time when each week appears new aircraft and uh, the, if the, the aircraft, that aircraft could take off, it was good aircraft. If it also can land it, it was perfect aircraft. <laughs> what I mean is there was no rules, no general approaches in all, all this area. That's why the decision was made. The Flight Research Institute was founded and the, from that time became the main main research institute in uh, Soviet, then in Russia, Soviet Union and Russia Federation, which uh, main speciality is flight tests. 70, 70 years, it's good experience. During this time, it was 450 flight test beds and uh, <coughs> large-scale flying models created. We collect a lot of experience in any branches of flight test, in aerodynamics, stability, safety, hypersonic aircraft protection, and so on, etc. We create a unique national database of knowledge, knowledge of knowledge base, knowledge of flight test, of of the. Uh, science of flight tests. Our main, main function, I mean, Flight Research Institute function is from, other si from one side usual, from other side not, not, sorry. Its formation, as you can read it, I hope it's visible, formation of scientific and technical base for further aviation project. Based on our previous experience, we are going, we are preparing to take over 
new prototype, new aircraft for flight tests. We also uh, cooperate in with all our Russian, first of all, uh, design bureaus in terms of support of prototype flight test. Later, I'll explain the small difference, uh, what I mean. <coughs> so, there is a certification center based on our institute, which provides certification of all civil aircraft which produced in, uh, uh, not only in Russia, in the former Soviet uh, space, uh, territory. Another important thing is all the rules in aviation, experimental aviation in our country are based on our proposal, our research, and so on. It, it means all the requirements to the aircraft, requirements to the procedure of flight tests, safety requirements, manuals, how to, how to provide the test in each particular area. And uh, to do this function, we have and we maintain and develop a huge experimental base, which consists of a lot of aircraft using as a flight test bed, a lot of rigs or test benches, which provide very special, very special possibility to our specialists to test, to provide ground and in-flight test with full range of requirements. As you can see, uh, uh, HAL, HAL representative reports all the ways from aerodynamics, fatigues, and so on. <coughs> In general, technological base of flight uh, research and test is if you can see in the upper corner, sorry, lower corner, aircraft prototypes, which is produced by the design bureau, very fam uh, familiar, uh, very famous like MiG, Sukhoi, and all others. Another, another branch is flight test, best, flight test bed, large scale flying models, which is produced by Flight Research Institute. So we are moving based on scientific and methodological basis, based on our scientists, based on our flight test specialists uh, and infrastructure. We are providing so-called advanced flight research and testing of aircraft and their components. What does uh, we use uh, the word advanced flight research? It means leading. It means not for today, but for tomorrow. When we are talking about the prototype flight test, we are doing very clear job today. Unfortunately, time in time, it, it's, we are, today we are doing what we have to, to done yesterday. <laughs> and uh, uh, on all stage of prototype certification of the aircraft, we're providing technical support and uh, decide for this process. And, uh, uh, decide the problem which appears during this flight test. This is the main, uh, main function, what we are doing when providing advanced flight research, creating flight test bed, as I already told, demonstrator, which are using to, to decrease all the risks. For example, if, if we are going, if somebody going to, to try to use new material on the aircraft, it is better not start with the prototype, first prototype. It is better to use specially equipped aircraft to understand if, it, if it's, this decision is right or not. And a lot of things. It's very difficult when on, when on first prototype meets all the new, absolutely new systems. It is difficult to, come, to provide the flight test because these things happen. Today, uh, you, uh, today you have any problem with the engine, yesterday it was with the fly-by-wire and so on, and you cannot move quite fast or as fast as the, uh, it's, requ it's uh, required. That's why we are using uh, the flight test bed for separate 
test of each of each elements of the whole further future whole, whole system and so on we study actual problems permanently study on actual problems of uh, aerodynamics flight dynamics and so on creating as i told already uh, technologies of flight flight toast in the and share our knowledge to all the aircraft designer and producer in our company and the very important thing we are in our institute we are creating a special measuring equipment maybe not correct words but for example today fortunately we are using laser laser ring gyroscope to test it to confirm the the designer that this particular this uh, thing shows whatever was uh, included during design we need in instrument more sensitive more accurate and so on that's why when I, when i am talking we are preparing measurement base also one as a sample it's integrated flight test bed based on uh, quite known aircraft tupoli 154 which were used first of all for a digital fly by wire uh, control system Algori hardware algorithm also atmospheric research this this just the sample this uh, flight test bed used i hope you heard buran space uh, space russian space soviet space shuttle which uh, land absolutely automatically from from orbit to in prescribed place with, with prescribed uh, trajectory all of the things, all the controls, all the algorithms, all the information provided to pilots was uh, researched, developed, and certified on this flight test bed. Also, it's all modern navigation equipment. Uh, this uh, flight test bed can test all uh, modern navigation equipment for CNS ATM system and all other modern traffic air traffic management requirements. We also use auxiliary, smaller, like you can see, in the, as a helicopter, small aircraft, and so on, to, to test particular, small particular autonomous part or something which, will, which uh, later will join the whole difficult complex of equipment. This bird looks like you can see. Another thing, if uh, we're talking about the military uh, direction of branch, we also use military aircraft uh, <coughs> to use it. First, the digital fly-by-wire in Russia uh, for combat aircraft uh, were tested on this flight, uh, flight test bed, sorry. In Russia, it's laboratory, <laughs> that's why I'm... <coughs> Um, and uh, now you can see the perfect aircraft Sukhoi 30, Sukhoi 35, and the uh, last generation mix, flying using all ideas which were tried and proved during the flight test of this aircraft. Very interesting branch of our, our um, development and uh, our uh, businesses, <coughs> uh, hypersonic project and uh, even the space project uh, in the 80s, in 80s of previous century, it was a lot of job connected to, as I, uh, as I told, the Buran system. We performed nine, nine uh, real space flights of, uh, of uh, flight test bed uh, built, designed by our institute uh, to to, to show, to understand if it is possible to do the job, I mean, landing, landing from, orb, from high orbit, the maximum altitude was 300 kilometers above ground, to land at, uh, at least at region. Not, it was so-called controllable descent from, from the orbit. This job was successfully finished. Also, in this uh, experiment, uh, we use a thermal protection, heat protection for further, <coughs> for further shuttle. One of the sample <coughs> is a scheme of, uh, scheme of, sorry, scheme of uh, our further 
experiment uh, connected to new hypersonic flying test bed. Flying test bed which uh, should answer us for uh, nearest questions regarding the high speed, high temperature, even plasma conditions. <coughs> A lot of, a lot of, oh, one of the main of our part of our activities is a <coughs> flying test bed for engine flight test. We are using, for engine test, we are using small aircraft, depend on which type of engine we are, or which size of engine we are using, like Sukhoi Su-27, as you can see, or MiG-29 aircraft. But for the for biggest aircraft, we, sorry, engine, we are using bigger aircraft, IL-76, which is a really unique aircraft because of uh, his capability to fly with three engines operating only without, nearly, without any limitation and very safe. This is a sample of uh, <coughs> Nikolai Kuznetsov NK-93 engine. Uh, on the third of uh, on the third of uh, February, Sukhoi Superjet, which, uh, as I know, approaching to Bangalore Air Show now, somewhere on the way, <coughs> uh, Sukhoi Superjet engine, some 146, uh, which is designed by and and built by the uh, Snekma and the Saturn Cooperation, was successfully tested exactly on time, just immediately. <laughs> the flight tests were finished immediately when it uh, requires to be installed on the real aircraft. Fortunately, these things happen. Very special song about the very special event. Our latest job, fortunately, it's our international, one more international pro project, but with the Indian aviation industry. It's flight test bed for recovery engine flight test. We start negotiations, <coughs> we start negotiations very, very many years ago, but in the year 2007, the contract was signed, which uh, fixed, the, uh, fixed uh, the main technical <coughs> phase of, of uh, this project, main border of responsibility and so on. In January, January, February year 2010, first Indian equipment uh, arrives into our institute in Russia. The integration job continues, uh, integration, I mean mechanical and all inter other interfaces, integration with the aircraft continues until uh, September. On September, October, we start our uh, ground test of the engine and uh, fortunately, not fortunately, but we, we did everything to, to get this result. The, the 3rd of uh, November, the aircraft performed their maiden flight. This Cyrillic hieroglyph means uh, maiden flight of IL-76 test bed. The, uh, you can see small, small short video. It's Oh, sorry, this is a, a Russian soundtrack, but I understand you, you, I hope you understand what does it mean. <coughs> this is a first, first fast, speed, fast speed run and then maiden fly, flight. Unfortunately, in, the, in November, the weather is in Moscow, how to say, <laughs> not, not very good. So this flight um, uh, was per, uh, performed without the aircraft of Tail, tail chase, yeah? But everything was safe. And uh, this flight brings us results of uh, engine, main engine parameters, operation, all the systems. I, I, I told a little bit later, something goes wrong with this. Believe me, on this moment, I saw the uh, tear dropping from Indian people eyes and Russian also. <laughs> so it was very interesting project. We understand that our Indian partner, first of all, Mr. Mahana Rao, chief of GTRE, 
and uh, we feel how to say very very precise attention from Mr. Tamil Mani, <laughs> from Mr. Saraswat. Uh, we met in Moscow, and uh, I understood that uh, they leave Moscow if if uh, not satisfied, but at least not disappointed of of the situation. Because it's really not not too easy job. First of all, we are unfortunately we are different people. We are, have a different culture. We have a engineering different engineering culture and so on. The main thing with which allowed us to do this joint job was motivation. Both sides was interested to do this job as soon as possible and uh, special thanks to Indian Indian team because the, they was available 24 hours a day seven seven days a week. I think it's And uh, I believe our relationship, I know exactly what we need to improve in, organi in organization of this job, but I know nothing which should be improved in our relationship. Just before landing. From emotional part, uh, it's a victory team, as you can see, with <coughs> all not all, sorry, not all the team, but with the Indian side. Head from the Indian side, Mr. Mahanarao, Mr. Siddiq, Mr. Ja, uh, uh, pilot. We, uh, we flew with a joint crew. One Indian flight test engineer were operate on board of the, of the aircraft. Thank you very much, him, for his uh, brave coverage and so on. <laughs> and, uh, he believed us, he believed us, he trust us, and we did this job, from my point of view, in the best way. So it's an emotional part of, uh, of presentation. Uh, back to, not so interesting, but uh, from my point of view, just for general knowledge, the aircraft was equipped, first of all, to be integrated with the uh, 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 cavalry engine and gondola. It's specially reinforced. Gondola was designed, which can operate with engine with the thrust up to 25 storm. A lot of improvement in firefighting system, hydraulic system, fuel system, and so on, so on, so on. A lot of <coughs> improvement inside. It's not really cargo aircraft because there is a lot of <coughs> onboard <coughs> workstation for uh, flying test engineer. So, uh, as you can see, airborne measurement system registered, uh, registered 1,200 parameters. 780 it was transmitted on ground where Remain, remaining team of Indian guys, I mean, instead, except one who was on board, <coughs> were sitting near the monitors and uh, monitor and making a decision if everything is okay, if not, and so on. Now our, now our cooperation uh, freezed because in Russia it is, it is winter. We are waiting to, to continue, yeah, <laughs> to call. <laughs> We, we are waiting for our, uh, our India partner in Moscow at somewhere in the beginning of March to continue. And within this year, definitely we will finish this, this job. And uh, India will have fully certified, fully operational first military aircraft engine. It's a really, it's a really, event. Very few words. Somebody forget to show me the time which I have, which remains. <laughs> Still 25 minutes. I can talk 25 minutes more? <laughs> okay. Uh, five, minutes five minutes more. Okay. So, another side uh, of our activity, if, if you remember, is a <coughs> support of prototype uh, test. There is a lot of things uh, in this list, it's really 
huge job, huge value of job once again. All the company, we are working with all the company in Russia with the uh, old design bureau during prototype design, development, uh, flight test and certification. We support the flight test uh, using specially equipped aircraft with a special equipment. It's not the uh, AVAX like uh, early uh, warning and so on. It's specially telemetry and control also. We have a lot of territory, you know, even up to Northern Pole. There is uh, no any radio, no any navigational aids. This aircraft can fly and can monitor flying object, different flying object, moving and control them following in parallel. We have a lot of uh, rigs, as I told you. For example, rigs for uh, high intensity radiated uh, field effect immunity test. All the Russian aircraft goes through this bench. Yakovlev, as you can see, Sukhoi, weapons, even, even the drones. Lighting protection, also our area of, uh, area of our activity. Very specific things, flight strength test of aircraft, including flutter, natural flutter test, uh, air, air elasticity, sorry, sorry for my terrible English, air elasticity also. To provide such a possibility to operate, it's required a huge complex of traditional airfield equipment system and very specific one. I can, to, I can told a lot. Uh, I'm afraid after the tea break you, you are near to sleep now. So I, I'll expedite. I don't know how it how it's visible. Yes, it's this not very interesting chart looks lo really like this from the from the Moscow side of uh, our aerospace. Last scheme. Lot of a lot of boxes and so on, but the idea is the simple. If you can see, the aircraft during creation and development goes through this central row. Different stage in different countries, a different chase. Advanced project uh, and so on, moving through technologies level from zero to operational one. On each stage, very wise men decides if it's already technical readiness level one, two, three, and so on, so on. Unfortunately, and this happen, these things happen unfortunately quite often, doing, designing and developing the new aircraft, somebody forget. That thing I, I already told you. At all the stage you need to have, you must have, special equipment, how you will, how you will analyze composite wing, loading for example, drilling the hole in composite lingerie and so on. It's just a, s a, s a sample, but idea is the flight test uh, basis, uh, flight test facility, flight test instrument should move simultaneously with the aircraft development. Do not forget it if you want to be on time. So we are ready to improve our cooperation with, first of all, Indian side, with all the sides, mm, all aviation, partner in aviation business. We can spare, as, as I told you, even French guys, very strong from my point of view, country and the company could find solution to operate with us. I think uh, our cooperation on cover project shows we have future, it is efficient and effective for both sides to collect the knowledge of how to build and test the, the engines as fast as possible. And another is for us to share our knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry, I, I definitely, still no, still no time on display. I definitely crossed the border. Thank you very much indeed. Friends, uh, that was a, indeed a very exciting lecture on the importance of flight tests 
and evolving modalities of flight tests data back to the designers in a manner that the product while being evolved could be upgraded or the, or the pitfalls taken uh, note of. And he has emphasized the importance of uh, appropriate test setups for a variety of uh, areas, whether it's aerodynamics, airframe fatigue, or engine testing, lightning protection, aeroelasticity. I think it's, a, it's, it's indeed a beautiful subject because the contributions of flight test engineers towards uh, improving the design potentials of a well-conceived aircraft to make it even more mature, to evolve as a product, uh, is something uh, which, is, uh, which is not easy because it's interpretation of data in a manner beneficial to the designers. And only those who have gone through the entire cycle of development will know the beneficial aspects of flight tests feeding into the design uh, input at appropriate time in the prototype evaluation stage or development stage so that the overall cycle for development gets substantially reduced. I think uh, we will take one or two questions. So uh, Mr. Westlaw, if you don't mind, one or two questions uh, on this subject. We have another five minutes and then we'll switch over to the next speaker. Yes, questions if any, please. Do I take it that all the designers are absolutely perfect designers and no test flight test problems? <laughs> Maybe it's a little later. Yeah, yeah, please. What uh, system of testing and process did you utilize for the carrier-based MiG-29K trials? If you are talking about the particular flight test operation, I mean from, from carrier and to carrier, and uh, I believe you know that the uh, year 2009, we landed on the Russian uh, carrier Admiral Kuznetsov on Indian, uh, flying Indian aircraft, which was uh, produced for uh, Indian Navy. Uh, before this, uh, we passed through if you saw uh, the uh, high intensity high intensity radio uh, immunity uh, test tricks to confirm using simulating particular same uh, frequencies and power which applies to the aircraft when it stayed on ground it's so called electromagnetic compatibility another thing to operate to operate uh, to train the pilot to train the pilot. There was in the Soviet uh, time, there was a special facility which uh, now belongs to Ukraine. And uh, time in time we are using, uh, we means Russia, Ministry of Defense of Russia, using it for uh, training the uh, Russian Navy pilot. It's possible. It's possible to organize even a foreigner to, to visit here. Another thing is uh, the same facility is building starting from this year, end of this year, in Yeysk, near the Black Sea, on Russian territory for, 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 for the Russian uh, Navy. Is it answer for your questions? Or, or can you... Uh, I, I just wanted to check as to what uh, basis did you use, what sort of a process did you use for flight testing? Uh, process? This particular, this particular aircraft uh, for carrier compatibility. Uh, this particular, when we're talking for, for use on the carrier, aircraft carrier. Yeah. What's what? It's not a secret. It's not a secret that the the Indian Navy requirements was that the aircraft should conform to Western military standards, which start with, from Mills and so on. So aircraft complies with the two standards, Russian uh, standard regarding military uh, aviation, military aviation requirements, and the. Uh, Western means American one. Deck lander. LCA, one version of the aircraft which we, it's uh, most ready for the first flight is for the naval applications. We at uh, Samilac, the Indian Military Certification Agency has no great 
uh, past experience on certification of a naval platform for deck landing purposes. We need to interact with somebody to understand and evolve the criteria, regulatory criteria for certification. Can you just suggest somebody whom, with whom we can interact and evolve criteria specific to our LCA Naval Navy Accord? MIG specialist has uh, enough experience in, in terms of uh, airframe requirements uh, and, uh, as uh, regarding the electromagnetic compatibility, it's Flight Research Institute responsibility. And now we are starting the job with uh, Admiral Gershkov, Vikramaditya. Do you, do you know? Uh, I mean, Flight Research Institute starts this year, uh, same process, uh, electromagnetic compatibility, the ship and aircraft. It will be finished before Vikramaditya comes here. And my once again, my, my make, question make, is make not that. that. Uh, my question is: you, Can GFRI become my consultant to forward the certification of LCA Navy for carrier landing certification? Tejas. Flight Research Institute and uh, uh, in small particular part, uh, MIG company also. Can be very useful in this cooperation. GFRI and Lee put together, they can advise you for naval version of LCA certification process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elpsal answering the questions. I think uh, Similac chief would have got the answer translated by your friend in Russian. Uh, I think uh, we, we would like to thank you, sir, Mr. Gansal, for, for a very nice presentation and for the patience you have shown in answering the questions. Thank you very much. Indeed.